This is a first lesson on functions. So a function is a set of ordered pairs in which each x value corresponds to only one y value. Each function must pass the vertical line test and you're allowed to abbreviate that with VLT. So my first diagram when it is drawn. My second diagram drawn. And my third one drawn. If you can imagine an infinite number of vertical lines as if they're rain drops coming down, if each one of those lines only hits the function once and only once at most at once I should say this is definitely a function it is possible that a raindrop a vertical line does not hit the function and it hits it exactly once <laughs> right here but the moment a raindrop hits it more than one time it is not a function because it fails the vertical line test So clearly you can see in the last picture, this is not a function because there exists a vertical line that intersects the graph more than once. So in order for something to be a function, it must pass the vertical line test, which the first one does. Now, below that, it talks about the domain. And you have to know that the domain of a function is the set of all x values that are actually accepted by the function. Now sometimes you have restrictions on the domain because the input would fail to produce an output for the function. So I gave you four basic examples down below. You are gonna have to know how to determine the domain of each of these four examples. All right, there are four different types. So my first one is f of x is equal to 4x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. So what do you know about fractions? You know that the denominator cannot equal 0. This is what you should know. The denominator cannot equal zero. Now, if you know that the denominator can equal zero, well, let's figure out first when it is equal to zero. When you set your denominator expression equal to zero, all quadratics get factored using dots in this case. Set each one of those factors equal to zero. And solve. When x is equal to three, the numerator comes out to be 15, but the denominator comes out to be zero, and you are not allowed to divide by zero. Therefore, x cannot equal three in the domain when x is equal to negative 3. Your numerator comes out to be negative 9, but your denominator comes out to be 0. You're not allowed to divide by 0, so therefore you're not allowed to include negative 3 either. So what is your domain? It's all real numbers except for negative 3 and positive 3. And the way we write that down is as follows. Negative infinity to negative 3, we jump over negative 3 and go across to 3, we jump over 3 and we go to infinity. This is interval notation for the domain. It means all real numbers work except for negative 3 and positive 3. That's the answer to the first one. Now, second type of problem that you could get 
would be a problem that includes a radical. So I gave you this particular example. So what is something that we do know? We do know that you can't have a negative number underneath the radical. The part that's underneath the radical is actually called the radicand. And the radicand cannot be a negative number. So I'm just going to write it like this. Cannot be a negative number. This is what I know. Well, a negative number is the opposite of a number that is zero or larger. So you're allowed to have zero as a radicand, and you're allowed to have a positive number as the radicand. So in order for me to figure out what the domain is, you're going to take the radicand, and you're going to guarantee that this expression is not only just greater than zero, making it a positive number, it could even be equal to zero because you can take the square root of zero. Now when you solve this, you're gonna move the 12 to the other side and you're gonna get six X is greater than 12, only to divide by six and get X is greater than or equal to two. But I do want you to write down your answers in interval notation. So if I want X values that are two or larger, you're going to write down that the number 2 is included, so you use the bracket, and larger means it goes to infinity. This is the domain in interval notation. It stands for all x values beginning at 2 and up. Now, there is a third type that you have to know how to do, and this one is h of x is equal to the number 12 divided by the square root of 5 minus x. So what are the things that I do know? In general, I know that the denominator cannot equal 0. That has a denominator. But I also know that the radicand cannot be a negative number. So basically, in this case, the radicand cannot be a negative number, but because it's positioned in the denominator, the radicand can't be equal to zero either. Well, if it can't be negative and it can't be zero, that means that it outright has to be positive. So in order for me to figure out the domain, you have to make sure the radicand expression is a positive number meaning it's got to be an expression that is greater than zero. Now, if you move the five to the other side, you're going to get negative x is greater than negative five. But when you divide by a negative number, remember you have to flip the direction of the inequality. So dividing by a negative number flips the inequality to less than. That is the correct answer. Any x value that is less than five is part of the domain, but when you write it in interval notation, the domain is any number less than 5, meaning it can go all the way to the left towards negative infinity and go almost to 5, but it actually can't include 5, so you don't use that bracket, you have to use a parenthesis. That is the domain of example number 3. Now, this page also has a fourth type of example that I would test you on. This time it says k of x is equal to log base 2 of x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now, a lot of people get intimidated when I start putting in logarithmic functions, which is this. But what you really just have to know what you have to know is that the logarithmic inner part, which is what I put the wavy line underneath, has to be positive. That's what you're supposed to know, that the inner part of the log has to be 
greater than zero. It can't be equal to zero. It doesn't work. It can't be negative. It doesn't work. So the things that you're supposed to know is that the inner part of the log has to be greater than zero, which means the expression that I'm looking at, x squared minus 3x minus 10 has to be greater than zero. Now you just had a test on this a while ago and I said nobody solves quadratic inequalities. So what you were supposed to do is assume that you were looking at an equation, which would be x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals zero. That is fairly easy to factor. I hope we're good enough that I can just write down the factors without explanation. x minus 5 times x plus 2 equal to zero. And that equal zero part means that you make the t-chart and then you set each factor equal to zero and solve. So x minus 5 equals zero and solve it. And x plus 2 equals zero and solve that. Now, the two answers that you just got are not for the problem that you're trying to solve. They're the answers for the equation. If you want an answer to the inequality, and that's what I do want, you have to answer the inequality on a number line. These two numbers are the numbers that go on the number line, negative 2 and positive 5. Now I did tell you when it is a quadratic, there is a shortcut. When the quadratic is greater than 0, you shade on the outsides. So open circles because it's missing the or equal to bar and you're shading on the outsides. So you don't even have to do a test point. When they're quadratics and it says greater than, you're always shading on the outside. Now the only thing I'm looking for is even though this is the correct display of the answer, I do want it in interval notation. So the piece on the left hand side for the domain goes from negative infinity to negative 2, but the negative 2 is not included because it's not filled in. Then there's that gap in the middle. You have to write down the union symbol. That's for the gap in the middle. When you want the shading on the right, it goes from 5 to infinity, but the number 5 is not included, so therefore you are using parentheses. So problem number four, the domain in interval notation is on the far right of the board. Now the last part of this first page says the range of a function is the set of all y values obtained by the possible input. Okay, now we only discussed what's a function by passing the vertical line test and how to figure out the domain you have to remember that the domain corresponds to the x values and the range corresponds to the y values.